Hello everyone, Jekyll here. Before we start, I have a thing to announce. This is the 300th video on the channel. Yay! End of the announcement. Anyway, this video is going to be a little bit different than the usual discussion ones I tackle. I'll be looking at my top 10 duels from the Duel Monsters anime. I'll be looking at the duels itself, the anime BS, the emotional importance, and I'd also like to remind everyone that this is my personal opinion. And without further ado, let's get started. Number 10! The final duel of the Duelist Kingdom arc is a great one. The stakes were extremely high and with Pegasus' overpowered ability to read minds, Yugi had to swap with his other self every single turn. That made Pegasus take this even higher and turning the game into a shadow game. With that he put little Yugi on a clock. Since it's a Duelist Kingdom duel, the amount of anime BS on display is ginormous. However, that doesn't diminish the fact the entertainment value is great. The aftermath is also good, not only cementing Yugi as the king of games, but also Pegasus as a man of his word, even if he was an antagonistic force in this arc. Number nine. Another Duelist Kingdom duel, but this is the one everyone's been waiting for, the rematch of the century, Yugi vs Kaiba. Yugi literally had no reason to humor Kaiba with the duel since there's little on the line for him. On Kaiba's side, however, is the other way around. This duel is very important. Winning it will give him the opportunity to face Pegasus and save Mokuba, and that's why he gives his all. Just like previous duel on the list, there's a great amount of anime BS here with the infamous Mammoth Graveyard fusion and more. This duel also shows how much Kaiba cares about Mokuba, since during the final turn, he decides to threaten Yugi with suicide just so he can win and try to save his brother. As a little bro myself, I'm a sucker for something like that. Number eight. This duel isn't particularly exciting or of high stakes, however there are two things that make this one stand out a bit, at least for me, and no, Joey being in it is not the factor, too much. The first one is the extremely elaborate combo that Grandpa Mudo pulls out. Even if the boss monster is not worth the effort though, it's still nice to see something like that getting pulled off, not to mention that little competition he had with Professor Hopkins. The aspect of this duel that makes it even a part of this list are the participants. At the beginning of the series we saw Joey getting trained by Grandpa, and this is a student-master fight, in which the student surpasses the master. It's always a good indicator of a character's growth, and that's the primary reason this duel is in the number 8 slot. Number seven. The first tag duel of the series, the premise is very interesting with changing the card game into a board game, however the amount of anime BS on display in this one tops pretty much everything on the list. I know that at this point in the series there were no solid rules to the card game, but what is happening in this duel is utterly insane. Still, it's one of the most entertaining duels. Number six. Another duel with Joey. No, I'm not biased. Okay, maybe a little bit. But that's beside the point. This is the very first duel in which Joey is alone, and by that I mean completely alone. He had to duel against Rex without Yugi giving him tips, but the gang was still with him, giving him moral support. In this case, he's alone in a cave, dueling a creepy zombie boy who is being coached by a professional. This duel establishes Bandit Keith as a real threat to the cast, not only due to his dueling prowess, which he exhibits coaching bones, but also his lack of remorse regarding cheating, which we can see after the duel's concluded. Like in every Duel Kingdom duel, the amount of anime BS is staggering, but it still makes for an entertaining match to watch, while also establishing a minor antagonist of the arc in the process. Oh, this duel. This duel is important on many levels. First of all, it's the first time we see little Yugi duel. I wanted to know it was always the Pharaoh that took over during a card game, but this time he's not here. This makes this duel additionally entertaining since there's no information regarding little Yugi's deck. Him playing cards which the Pharaoh has never used takes the viewer by surprise. Not to mention there's Bakura's strategy, which is something not seen in the anime too often, which is also a nice change of pace. Number four. I know, I know, I know this arc isn't 
popular due to too much anime bullshit as there was in Duelist Kingdom, if not more. However, when it comes to duels, this one comes out on top. The plays done are really good, but it's the emotional aspect that takes it to be so high on the list. This duel establishes Raphael, not only as a very strong duelist, but also as a person who cared for his cards. Not in the say even sweet do IRL, but that's beside the point. For him, those monsters were family, and his strategy reflected that. With him not playing those he cares about lie in the graveyard. This duel also shows the Pharaoh's weakness. In his mind, he had to win it no matter the cost. This mindset pushed him on a dark path and getting back from it was his journey in this arc. Too bad this doesn't haunt him for the rest of the series, but since the arc was a filler anyway, whatever. Number three. Okay, this one is probably going to be a rather controversial. This is a very good duel, both in the technical aspect as well as the emotional one. When it comes to the duel itself, it's a treat. There are mind games, combos, counterplay and more. The biggest issue of this one is everything surrounding the duel. The viewer is constantly thrown out of the action by shots of Ishizu, talking about god fighting, Joey on a hospital bed, and a fucking vision of the ancient Egyptian past. My sheer annoyance on that last one is so great that should you compare that to Kaiba's ego, it would have been the size of a grain of sand. This is also one of the longest duels in the series, and not because of the amount of card play, but dialogue between Kaiba and Yugi, regarding friendship, past, the true meaning of strength, and on top of that, so the cuts to give the rest of the cast some screen time. If you're able to watch the cut version of the duel, please do so, it's very entertaining, and it will take you for a ride. Number two. Some might actually wonder why this is here, and for such a question, I'll just answer with another question. Have you actually seen this duel? With Joey being the one without an Egyptian god, he's at a clear disadvantage in the Battle City semi-finals. However, he still got into the duel and gave it his all. There was a lot of pain, a lot of anime bullshit, most of it was attributed to Joey's luck, but what makes this duel my number two is the finale, the final turn, in which Joey survives the onslaught provided by Ra and was about to win the duel all together. Too bad for Joey though, the injuries he sustained and his shadow game were too much for him to handle and he passed out. Or died if you're watching it Japanese. That fact devastated the entire cast and Kaiba finally approved of Joey as a duelist. While in the meantime Merrick was kind of pissed that Joey made him go this far. Should Joey hold just a little bit longer he could have won the duel, which is an, an achievement all by its own. But this duel perfectly showcases Joey's growth throughout the arc. And as I mentioned before, I'm a sucker for such moments. And that's why this is my number two. There's only one honorable mention, the duel that everyone thinks about when a top 10 duels of Duel Monsters anime comes up, and that is the showdown between Yugi and Weevil under Boo, I mean under Wood, in the waking of the Dragon's Ark. In all seriousness, there wasn't that much riding on this one, there was no emotional payoff, just an epic overkill and a meme. Still an amazing moment, but not top 10 material. Number one! I don't think this is a surprise to anyone, the final duel of the series, the duel that created a tradition. Of course there's anime BS, as always. However, the plays provided by both the Pharaoh and Yugi keep the viewer at the edge of their seat, especially when a temp pulls out three Egyptian gods out of his ass. There is one sequence in the duel which was cut from the dub, when Yugi resolves his gold sarcophagus negating monster reborn in the process and getting rid of Slifer again. Ishizu comments on how that's a message to the pharaoh, that those that are dead should stay dead. The emotional undertone of this entire duel is about growing from one another and more importantly, 
about letting go. Not all Yuki learned so much from Atem, and built his deck using that knowledge as a base. And Atem did the same, but with what he learned from Yugi, from his kindness, compassion. When it comes to the letting go part, it's best shown when Joey persuades the gang to let Atem go and just pass on to where he belongs, explaining that their bond of friendship will surpass time and space. Maybe not exactly those words, those are too smart for Joey, but you get the point. I'm a sucker for such things. So on top of the entertaining gameplay, this makes this duel the best one in the entirety of the Duel Monsters anime, at least for me. And that's all for this video. What do you guys think about this list? What are your opinion on duels in the Duel Monsters anime series? Leave your lists and your thoughts in the comments below. Subscribe if you fancy and like the video if you did enjoy it. And with that, I bid you all adieu. Chakol signing out. Peace!